Good morning. Good morning. Well, how many of you had hail last night? How many of you live within three miles of the church and did not have hail? Yeah, I, it's so strange for me around here that three miles away, the weather can be so completely different. But we had about golf ball size out here last night, and so you too, yeah, so... Hopefully everybody was able to stay safe and your gardens are okay. Mine looks okay this morning. I think I finally just let the weeds grow up around it, which protects the actual plants. <laughs> Sometimes you do what you got to do in this area, right? <laughs> um, a few announcements that I want to call your attention to. You maybe have noticed, or that when you grow up, you notice big rolls of wire fencing. This week, a fence will be put up around our playground area, and it will be, we'll be getting ready for our preschool that will be starting here in September. And it was really interesting, you know, I, I thought, well, that's great that we can do this, but I was talking to a young mom just yesterday who was telling me, I asked her where she took her kids to play. And she said, well, really the only one I feel safe and comfortable at is the one that's out west of town because it has a nice fence and a gate around it. Because my little one is so fast. And I thought, all more reason that I'm grateful for the hard work of so many of you that are coming tomorrow to help put that um, fence and gate in around to protect the children. And it will be, I know people from Spark have said many times, boy, when that ball goes over that fence, my heart stops a little minute because those kids are pretty darn quick. So um, you'll notice probably that should be finished this week. So we'll make sure and thank the men and women who have been helping us get ready for that. Uh, the other not big announcement that I would, we're going to lift today's uh, service up for the prayers for children who would possibly be coming to Sunday school this fall. A lot of you have said since I've been here, we sure wish we had Sunday school again. Well, we're going to give it a shot. And so what we need are children. And I need you to spread the word that there is going to be Sunday school every Sunday morning beginning September 10th. And it'll, just, it'll be a 30-minute Sunday school that will be full of singing and dancing and movement and a Bible story. And so we don't even need a curriculum for this style of Sunday school. But we do need adults who are willing to come and sing and dance and read stories and be teachers and shepherds. So it, we're, we are putting a prayer out to God that we have teachers and shepherds and students. And the only way that will happen is because of all of you. So if you have ideas or suggestions, you can let Bonnie know. She's going to be helping get it started. And she can let me know. And the second announcement as part of that then is we're going to be meeting in the, we're going to call it, or I've been calling it the upper room, which is where, how appropriate, right? The upper room where Jesus met with his favorite people. And I think Jesus' favorite people are probably children. So what a better place for them to meet. But it does need a deep cleaning. And so we're going to be sending out some emails and information that if you could participate in a deep cleaning sometime before now on September 10th, and you could let Bonnie or myself know, and we could come up with a date. Um, and while we're doing that deep cleaning, we are going to do a deep cleaning of the down under so that it's ready for our spark kids and for our preschool as well. So as a, a community, this is how we get a lot of work done, is we just come together and, and we really believe that many hands make light work. So please consider joining us to get some of that cleaning done. Are there any other announcements that are not in the bulletin that need to be made? You probably noticed our noisy gathering bucket. And we are going to be taking up a noisy offering, not gathering, because um, it's the second Sunday of the month. And for those of you who are possibly new, every time we have a second Sunday, we have the children go out into the congregation and they um, will pick up your coins and put them in this bucket. And this month's offering is going to go to the same place last month's offering, and it will go to the Lutheran Disaster Relief. And as you know, um, the disaster in Hawaii is one of, I just have been getting emails across my desk that all of the funds, that if we designate Hawaii on it, all of the funds will go directly to the disaster efforts for Hawaii. Uh, but that's what, that's the benefit of giving to Lutheran Disaster Relief, because as part of our mission giving, 
every year, that is what staffs the administration. But it's when we do special offerings like this, 100% of it goes directly to the relief. So I think that's a really great way for us to try to help um, alleviate a lot of the a lot of the pain that is happening in Hawaii because of the fires or other disasters in our world. Well, there are a lot of storms raging around us. Storms last night, storms around our world. Today we're going to be talking about storms. And we're going to be talking about how is it that God comes to us and helps us to find moments of peace and calm in the middle of the storm. So let's take a moment and Breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We gather this morning for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Each Sunday we have an opportunity to remember who is God and who are human. And we do that as we confess our sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have forfeited your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are free and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand and join me in our gathering song.
Storms rage around us within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we hear readings from God's Word. Sometimes kids get afraid, don't they? 
Well, one prayer that I want to teach you that somebody taught me a long, long time ago is the same, is similar to a reading that we're going to hear in a few minutes about Jesus, and actually about one of his disciples who got scared. And he said, his words were, Lord, save me. But the prayer that somebody that taught me when I was afraid was just to say, Lord, help me. And they said, breathe in the word Lord. So I'm going to do that. You can take a deep breath, and in your mind, think the word Lord. And then, when you breathe out, say, help me. Help me. So sometimes when we're afraid, our brain gets all jumbled up and we can't think of the right words. But those words are really all you need to say. And then that will help you realize that Jesus is right there with you. And if you say that three or four times, suddenly you can feel calm and maybe it will help you get through that scary situation. So should we practice that again? Take a big deep breath and, and, and think in mind, Lord, and you can all do that with me. Lord, take a deep breath. And exhale, help me. Lord, inhale, help me, exhale. And it's amazing how after you do that two or three times, you feel calm enough to feel that Jesus is present with you, and then you can figure out a way to get out of that scary situation, okay? So, let's pray. Lord, help me. Lord, bring us joy. Lord, forgive us. Lord, guide us. And finally, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was wondering if I could get the ushers and some of the kids who are in confirmation uh, to help me with the noisy offering. And then those of you who brought your change, if you just hold up your hands, and one of those, or one of us will come and get your, your noisy offering and we'll put it in the bucket up here. So I know I have a couple confirmation. I know I sprung it on you, but if you would help me, that would be fantastic. For any kids under the age of 15, come help me. Jesus. 
But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Word of God. Word of life. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. been a little worried about this sermon, so I decided I should bring some safety precautions, <laughs> just to make sure that I was going to be all right. <sighs> so, this one doesn't quite fit me because it was one of our kids. It was <laughs> uh, for, for the last 20 years, Darren and I have been living and working on rivers. And for most of those years, Darren has actually been uh, uh, had to patrol the rivers to make sure that people were safe. So needless to say, my children didn't get to do anything until they were full grown without a life jacket. And they learned all of the dangers of the water. And the reason that they had to learn that was because their dad had seen what happens when people don't take safety precautions. And even when what happens when people are as safe as they possibly can, water can be really, really scary. And it's, it can be very dangerous, especially when there's a storm coming. And so Darren would check people's boats to make sure they had safety jackets for everybody in the boat. You know why you have a safety jacket, right? Keeps you afloat. And you must have to have a whistle. Why do you think you would have to have a whistle? If it's really noisy, last night was it noisy when it was when it was uh, hailing? If you happen to be in the water and you had trouble on the water and you didn't have a whistle and you were just yelling, nobody would hear you. But they would hear this. So if you don't like noises, loud noises, plug your ears. I'm giving you a chance. And now I want you to go shh in your storm and everybody shut. Somebody would probably hear that, right? You would hope. Now, these aren't really a safety precaution, but as somebody who wears, used to wear contact lenses a lot, and so did my kids, we always used to have goggles for our kids too, just so that if they were underwater, they could see where they were going. It was a nice help. And then we always, in the boats, if we were out in our own boat, we always carried an extra paddle. We had paddles for both kids. But Darren and our oldest learned the hard way one day when they were out camping on the uh, Namakaga River that all of a sudden Leah said, huh, Dad, is that our paddle? <laughs> <laughs> and it was going down the river. But because he was always well prepared, he had an extra, and they were able to go recover the extra paddle. But like I said, no matter how many safety precautions we take in a storm, it doesn't mean we don't get afraid. And we often cry out for help, even when we have all of the safety measures that we can. And even then, sometimes tragedy occurs. I know for myself that I can worry about the whole world. Is there anybody here who just can't seem to trust God enough on a regular basis that they don't worry? So here I am, your pastor, saying that I trust and believe in God, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And yet I have a hard time trusting that this Jesus, the one who could walk on the waters, the one who through his word and through the chaos of the waters, life sprang forth, that I still feel like I'll take it upon myself to worry anyway. I wish I could tell you, but I could make that go away. I wish I could make it go away for all of you who worry. And so once in a while, I just have to turn off the news. I have to put down my phone. I have to not pick up a newspaper just for a minute. And then I remind myself, God really is in the middle of the storms. God really is right there. 
As members of the ELCA, we can say that God is there when we send an offering that goes directly to help the people of Hawaii right now. That through us, by the grace of God, all of that multiplies and clean water can be brought. Doctors can be sent. Emergency medical people and search and rescue people can be there. Jesus is there with them. Whenever there are storms, Jesus is there with us. But we forget that sometimes. <laughs> Those of you who have been coming for the last two weeks, you know what led up to this story. Because we're still in the 14th chapter of Matthew. And at the beginning of the chapter, we heard about John the Baptist being murdered. And then that same day, when the disciples and Jesus were mortified, they were grieving, they were upset, and they were scared. Then the crowd started following them. And how many people, do we remember how many people were there who followed Jesus after the news of the death of John the Baptist? 5,000 men plus women and children. So probably closer to 20,000 people. And when the disciples said, Jesus, you got to send them to get something to eat. What did Jesus tell us, the disciples? You feed them. He didn't say, oh, you know, we'll send them away because we've had such a long, hard day. He said, disciples, you feed them. They've had a long, hard day too. These were the people who had been left out of the empire. They had been cast aside by the empire of Herod. They had even been cast aside by many of the religious people from their own religious tradition. So on top of all of this, Jesus and his disciples had to have been exhausted. So this, the disciples were in the boat, and Jesus says, I'm going to go pray. And we're going to stop right there. Jesus, when we are afraid, when we are in the boat, when we have worked so hard and there is so much angst going on, what, what does Jesus do for us? He prays. Jesus prays for us. Jesus calls out to God the Father so that we, his disciples, can be the ones who are sent out into the world to bring the good news. And so, as they were battered and tired and terrified, and I don't know if they had lost their paddle or what had happened, but the boat had drifted away from shore, and they were in the middle of the lake with the winds around them. And Jesus heard their cry, with the sheer cry of the whistle. Jesus starts walking toward them. And imagine how much more terrified they must have been, because they didn't know Jesus could do this. And he's walking for, toward them, and they think it's a ghost. And I'm afraid sometimes when we have Jesus' love coming towards us, we doubt it too, because it seems so unexpected. We're so trapped inside of our own fear, we're so trapped inside of our own waves, and we're so unable to lift our eyes up and recognize Jesus. And he said, don't be afraid, take heart. That means be calm. And actually the Greek translation of it is I actually is I am. And we know who the great I am is, don't we? It is God, God's self. God is there with them. And so Peter says, all right, Lord, prove it. If this is really you, prove it. Have any of you ever bargained with Jesus before? I don't believe you're really going to help me out. So you do this, and then maybe I will go to church. Or you do this, and then maybe I'll invite somebody to come to Sunday school. We ask God to prove it. And Jesus said, okay. Come. And he calls, Jesus, he calls Peter out of the boat. And, and Peter actually, for a moment, is able to walk toward him. And then suddenly, I think it probably all came flooding to him. That this is not what disciples do. We are not the ones who walk on the water. That is God walking on the water. And of course he got afraid and started to sink. 
Do we sometimes get afraid and start to sink? So let's not make this gospel reading a reading and a story about, about Peter, or even about us. Let's let it be about Jesus, who hears our cry. Who, when we breathe in, we can say, Lord, and breathe out, save us. He is right there. Jesus is right there. When we cry out, Lord, save us, and reaches out and hangs on to us. And even if we sink to the very bottom, just as when we heard in Paul's letter to the Romans, when we sink into the abyss, that means Jesus comes up. Jesus lifts us up out of the abyss. And we, when we are reaching for heaven, Jesus comes down with us here. Jesus is here with us, lifts us out of the abyss and brings us down here with us. He comes down to us. And he is on our lips and in our hearts. That's what Paul writes to us in his letter to the Romans. And knowing that, brothers and sisters, you who are disciples, you are disciples who will be afraid. I am afraid all the time, but I have learned over and over and over again that all day long, I inhale, Lord, save me. And suddenly I am confident that the Lord is there. Because I know that he is in my heart and on my lips. He is, a, he is closer to me than my very breath. This Jesus, this Holy Spirit, who has come to bring life to us. Even in the midst of the most terrible storms, we are not alone. Let this be a gift to you. Not, not a command, not another law but a gift that you know that you are the feet. Blessed are the feet who brings this good news to the world. That's what Paul writes in his letter to the Romans. Beautiful are the feet. You are the hands and feet now of this message. You are the, the love carriers into the world to go and share this good news. But it is also for us. It is also for, also for us right here, right now, that we are preserved that word was used in Paul's letter to the Romans. We have a life saver, and he is called Jesus Christ. We have a way to get his attention through our cries. Jesus hears us when we cry. And we have a community to get into the boat with. And that's who we are. In ancient writings, boats are the symbol for the community. Jesus says, get into that boat and trust me. And here we are. And isn't that wonderful news that we have gotten into this boat called the church? Not this building. I am not talking about the wood and the pews. I'm talking about you. We are the church. We are the boat. And we are in it together. And when we pray together, Jesus hears us. And when we are in the middle of a storm, even as a congregation or a family or an individual, we can know that Jesus is there praying for us. And when we cry out, Jesus is right there in our, on our lips and in our heart, bringing to us salvation right here and into eternal life. Amen. The hymn that we're going to sing, I love this hymn, the one that says, And to that rock I'm clinging, which is wonderful, clinging to Christ always. But when you are weak or tired, and you are having a hard time clinging to Jesus, you can trust that Jesus reaches out and holds on to us. Please join me in our hymn of the day.
that God receives our joys and our concerns. Let us offer our prayers for the church, for those in need, and all of creation. God of grace and bringer of faith, your faithfulness is never ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Jesus Christ. Send us as the church to proclaim the good news of your love both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person, and through whatever means we are given. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is God of the sky and sea and all of creation. Help us to, to care for your environment. Help us to enjoy the beauty that you surround us from. And dear Lord, bring relief to areas that are in the midst of or recovering from natural disasters and storms. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace and justice, we have storms inside our own lives, inside of our own families, inside of this congregation and community. Bring peace to all of us. Lift up leaders who work together, who listen to one another, who desire to work for the well-being of all people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care and compassion, you bring us hope and assurance and comfort when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of doctors and nurses and emergency care providers. Bring rest and courage and strength to the police officers, to our military, to our health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe and heal those who are sick, especially those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. God of wonder and bringer of curiosity, Accompany us in both our joys and our sorrows, and lead us into the lives of children to invite them to this place. We pray for teachers and children who are preparing for a new school year, and we pray for the ministries for youth and family and children in this place. Make your presence known in our work and in our play, in our curiosity and in our conversation, and in our quiet rest. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Knowing that Jesus intercedes for us as we pray and hears our prayers helps us to be a more peaceful people. And we have now the opportunity to share a sign of that peace with each other. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also Let us share that peace.
This morning, our communion service will be at the rail, and the ushers will usher you forward from starting at this side, and you will fill in all the way around, and you will be given the bread and the cup, and then you will receive a blessing from me. And then after you receive all of those, those things, you may go back to your pew, and then ushers will guide you so that you will know when and where to go. And you know what, if there's a little chaos, God always has the ability to bring beauty from chaos. <laughs> uh, there are gluten-free options available for you. The white or the clear is the wine, and the grape is the, the purple juice that you are welcome to receive. And so now, we prepare ourselves for this meal that strengthens us through the body and blood of Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise at all times and in all places. And today we remember the night before Jesus was betrayed, that he was gathered with his disciples, and he took the bread, and he gave it to them to eat saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And we are now bold to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are now invited to this table that we know that does not belong to Custer Lutheran Fellowship. It does not belong to me or to you. This is the table of our Lord, where we are invited to come regardless of where we are on our own faith journey, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Please come, for all is ready. Oh. Um. 